we're going to go to Romans chapter 2. We'll continue our study there. It is a, a little rough when you're not used to having no water, electric, or cell phone service. Because there's none of that electric's out up there. <laughs> Top of the hill to get the cell phone service to call somebody. <clears throat> uh, when sometimes we don't realize how spoiled we are as Americans, I think. All right, amen. But Romans chapter 2, we're going to look at verses 25 through 27 today. Your circumcision is the primary topic that Paul is going to bring out here. He's here. Can, Confronting another thing that the Jews trusted in. Verse 25, he starts with, For circumcision, verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not Uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee who by the law, or who by the letter and circumcision do it, does transgress the law. Oh, so here Paul addresses the topic of circumcision, which was very important to the Jews. He said, but for circumcision, profit it. So there is some profit in this circumcision. We know from a physical standpoint, there are some health benefits to it, but from a religious standpoint, the Jews were given the sign of circumcision as a sign of the covenant between God and the children of Abraham. Uh, right. That same baptism has kind of become the modern day equivalent in many denominations that they, and it certainly is a sign of the new covenant, but it's not to be administered to children like the Presbyterians and Amen. others teach. See, circumcision was given to the children of Abraham, but baptism was given to those who were in Christ. Amen. We will see to, later on that we are the spiritual children of Abraham, but so where baptism and circumcision differ is that circumcision was for all those who were born of Abraham, whereas baptism is all those who were born of Christ. Amen. And I think many, many denominations get that confused today. And they, they see baptism as a replacement for circumcision. And that, but by baptizing your babies, you're giving them the, that same type of sign. That's not, there's no correlation there. You're right. We said, circumcision prophets, if thou keep the law. Mm -hmm. Here was the key to it. Said, if thou keep the law, if they were to, practice and perform the deeds of the law, and yes, their circumcision was a benefit to them. Mm -hmm. As we all know, when, <clears throat> when they come to the law of Moses, you had to keep it in its entirety. Uh, and circumcision was only beneficial if you did such. Without keeping the law, it was really of no use. It was kind of like it if you were being baptized, but yet you never believed in Christ, it would be of no use. Amen. But yet the Jews, they put lots of stock in the fact that they were circumcised, the fact that they were the children of Abraham, that they were this privileged people because of this, and yet they couldn't even see that they were transgressors of the law of God. This kind of goes back to what we looked at last week in James 2.10, you keep the whole law and yet offend at one point, you're guilty of all. That's right. You can't. Circumcision couldn't outweigh the rest of the law. In fact, Paul will want to say later, if you keep the law, then it'll be counted for circumcision for you. Right. So the Jews, they put all this faith, if you will, this confidence in the fact that they were circumcised, the fact that they were children of Abraham, the fact that they were the Jews, and yet they failed to keep the whole law. Mm -hmm. So really it was of no, 
no spiritual use to them because they were not keeping the law. And by the time Christ came along, by the time Paul was writing this, the Jewish religion was quite different than that of Moses right. and Abraham. They had turned it mostly into traditions and commandments of men rather than the commandments of God. And in that sense, they weren't keeping the law either. They weren't guarding it and protecting it. But rather, they were just doing what they wanted to. Right. So we can liken that into those who are both baptized today and yet they live however they want to. They don't act as if they've ever been born again. It's of no use to them. Right. Said so we know that without faith, being baptized is just, just really just getting dunked under and getting wet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So circumcision also was just a, a medical procedure, nothing more if it was without the law. Mm -hmm. He said in the next part of the verse there, but if thou be a breaker of the law, we know all of us by nature are breakers of the law, including the Jews. Romans 3.23 tells us, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Right. And sin is the transgression of the law. We have all fell short of keeping the law perfectly, even though I'm sure there were some, some Jews who strove to do their best that they could, and even the best of them could not keep it perfectly. You bet. He said by the time Christ came along, they weren't really keeping it at all. They were doing what was according to their tradition more than what was according to the commandments of God. And he says, without being a breaker of the law, that circumcision is made uncircumcision. Of course, it doesn't mean in a literal sense, but in effect it was made as if they had never been circumcised to begin with. That this thing that they had trusted in was really of no benefit to them because they were lawbreakers. Right. Again, it's like putting all your faith in baptism and leaving out faith in Christ. It's of no good use if you've never trusted in Christ. Amen. Just like circumcision without the law is of no benefit either. And to the Jew, though, this would have been a pretty big deal. The circumcision, like I said, was quite important to them, both religiously and culturally. In fact, we don't have to turn there, but over in Acts chapter 10, when circumcised Jews saw the Holy Ghost came upon the uncircumcised Gentiles, it says they were astonished, they were amazed. Mm -hmm. They couldn't believe that God would do such a thing, really. Right. That's how big a deal circumcision was to them. But it would be, it'll be almost like those who, we'll say the Campbellites, Church of Christ types, who put all their faith in baptism. And if they see the Holy Ghost working upon someone who has never been baptized, <laughs> yet I, I dare say there's probably going to be some in heaven that have never been baptized. We know Amen. that the thief on the cross never was. Right. And certainly there's probably some today that never have been scripturally baptized, and yet they will certainly still experience salvation because salvation is separate apart from baptism. Amen. We'll go on in our text of verse 26 here. After he tells them that their circumcision was basically useless, he goes on verse 26 to say, Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, with uncircumcision, that is the Gentiles at this time, those who who did not descend from Abraham, they were the uncir uncircumcision by nature, that is, by natural course of things, they did not have that sign, and they were not born of the seed of Abraham, so therefore they were the uncircumcision. He says if they keep the righteousness of the law, and we know in and of ourselves we cannot fully keep that righteousness of the law, but in Christ 
his righteousness this can be imputed unto us. And in that sense, we can keep the righteousness of the law. Amen. And this word keep also carries the, the meaning of to guard, to protect. And just like we are to, to keep the faith today. We should not just give up righteousness and say, because of Christ fulfilled the law and say, well, righteousness doesn't matter anymore. Mm. Amen. Still, in Christ is the only way we can truly have that righteousness. He says, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And he says, he kind of poses this hypothetical question here that the conclusion that if one could perfectly keep the law, then his uncircumcision would be just as good. Circumcision really won't make a difference. Uh, Much like baptism isn't what will save you, it is whether you're in Christ or not. We can turn over to Acts chapter, I mean, not Acts, Galatians chapter 6, and see this one particular verse here. See, this is our, our standing in Christ, that he fulfilled the law, and he kept it perfectly, and that his righteousness has been imputed to our account. And therefore, it doesn't matter whether you were physically circumcised or not. Mm -hmm. Galatians 6, verse 15, here, here's the key. It says, for in Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Amen. Whether we have been made a new creature in Christ is what will ultimately matter. Whether it comes to circumcision or whether it comes to baptism or whether it comes to anything. Amen. Is have you been made a new creature in Christ or not? So the Jews had a problem of trusting in circumcision and they, they had a problem of trusting in Baptism and others in good works. But in another place here in Galatians, I don't I didn't write it down, but it, it's not circumcision or uncircumcision, but he says faith which worketh by love. Amen. Faith in Christ which makes the difference. Let's go back to our protection one more time here in verse 27. So after Paul has basically said that it doesn't matter. Circumcision or uncircumcision, he says, verse 27, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, to fulfill the law, judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. Again, here we see those that are uncircumcision by nature, that is, they were without, they were by nature those who were born. Of the Gentile nations who did not have this sign of the covenant. He says, though, that if they fulfill the law, shall they not judge thee? Speaking of the Jews, well, that's the believing Gentiles will be the judge of the unbelieving Jews. Now, I don't think we'll be Jew or judges in the sense of the Almighty Judge, but more like jurors on the trial. Mm -hmm. We can turn and see this in a couple places here. Matthew chapter 12. Here Christ gives us condemnation against the Jews that he was talking to here, the Pharisees, I believe it was. Matthew 12, verses 41 and 42. And start verse 38. Let me get the whole context here. He says, Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said, Unto them, an evil and adulterous generation seek after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. This is referring to when Christ would die and he would be 
buried three days and three nights, and he bad, rising in the third day. Notice verse 41 and 42. He says, The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repent at the preaching of Jonas. Behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Amen. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to appear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Amen. He said these here would be judges against the generation, this, these Pharisees and scribes, because they repented and they listened to the words of God. And so is, I think, since here that though they were Jews, though they were circumcised, though they had the law, yet that they are unbelieving, and the believing Gentiles will be in judgment against them. We turn over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we see, again here, Paul tells us that we will be judges in a sense. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He's dealing with the Corinthians taking each other to court, suing each other what we would do today, <laughs> bringing them before judges of the land. And verse number one says, Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Notice verse number two. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Amen. And that the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? That was verse 3 as well. He says, No, ye not that we shall judge angels, and how much more things that pertain to this life? Amen. And he says the saints shall judge the world. That doesn't mean the Roman Catholic version of saints. It just means the believers. He said, I don't, don't think we'll stand and pronounce judgment, but in a sense, we will be as the jurors on the, in a trial. But in a sense, we are a judgment against the world now that we stand and proclaim the truth and they obey it not. But so is the sense back in our text that it didn't matter whether it was circumcision or a Jew or had the law or not. What would ultimately matter is that they had their righteousness which was of the law, which is that through the person of Christ. Have we fulfilled the law through Christ or have we left it off? To, that will be what will ultimately matter. So whether it won't be baptism and good works, it won't be for the Jews circumcision or that they were the children of Abraham. If you recall, I think it was John the Baptist said that God could of these rocks raise up children to Abraham. Right. And just the same he could I know he could do it today he could raise up children to himself whether it be rocks or a valley of dry bones amen but we should not put too much trust in what we are and what we have done but rather in Christ so I think the modern day equivalent of the Pharisees would be us thinking that because we're good sound Baptists that we're Really, something special. Yeah. Amen. Well, there's other denominations that do the same type of thing. The Catholics think that they're the only ones that have a right. The Church of Christ, they think they're the only ones that'll be in heaven. <laughs> but it doesn't necessarily matter your denomination. It matters most importantly if you've been born again, mm -hmm. as we'll see. Here, Lord willing, next week in the next few verses, we'll see that it's not, it's mostly a matter of the heart that's the problem. Because <laughs> he says, notice in the last part of our text here, if it fulfill the law, I shall judge thee who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. You know, even though they had the law and had signed the covenant, yet they still broke and transgressed the law of God. Mm -hmm. Yet they were still guilty before God. This thing shows that the law by itself could not save. 
It was not sufficient without Christ to ever save soul. You know, they had the exact things before them that God required for righteousness, and yet they couldn't keep it. So they had the law, they had the, the prophets, they had the covenant, and yet they still fell short of it. Right. So the problem, though, as we'll see in the next few verses, it was ultimately a problem with the heart, not a problem with the law itself, not a problem with circumcision or uncircumcision. Those things won't matter whether they're baptized or not baptized today. It's have you had a change of heart. Amen. Have you, have you believed in Christ or have you not? You have that circumcision which is inwardly and not outward. That's what matters in the person of Christ. That's what will matter when we stand before God, not physical circumcision, not even baptism or not. It's important as it is, I believe it is in the New Testament, yet our trust should not be in those things. Mm -hmm. But are we a Jew inwardly or are we as a Jews and put on the outward appearance. Mm -hmm. See, they were, so I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but they were Jews outwardly. They put on the appearance of being a Jew, but inwardly they were just as wicked and vile as the rest of them. Right. And today we may put on a good appearance of a good person or a religious person. We may be faithful to the church services, but ultimately what will matter is have you been a new creature in Christ? You wouldn't close with that thought. Amen.